Today I'm going to talk about edge detection. So edges are a place in the image where intensities are changing rapidly. Exactly what constitutes an edge can be domain dependent. For example, uh, here we have a step edge which rises abruptly. Here we have a ramp edge which rises gradually. And this could also model a uh, blurring of a step edge. An edge operator is a spatial filter which enhances discontinuities. <coughs> For example, we've seen the use of the digital approximation to the first derivative, which um, is a one by two operator that looks like this. And we've also seen how the behavior of these um, derivative operators, what they do in the frequency domain, namely, the Fourier transform of a derivative is um, this operator here, which uh, raises the frequency component to the nth power. So for the first derivative, um, it looks like this, meaning that the filter uh, attenuates frequencies near zero and enhances high frequencies. To see what the effect this has on images, um, here's a simulation on an image of a ramp edge. So this is the profile of that. This is the first derivative applied to this image. So we have zero, and then this is a constant slope upward, so that's this portion. And then again, we have a zero slope here, so we have zero here. And the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, so it's zero for this portion. We have a spike, a rapid jump here, which should actually be positive, and then a, uh, a dip, a negative going spike, which uh, is here, and then back to zero. So as we go down the rows here, we increase a little bit of noise. We add a little bit of noise to the image. So the noise is almost imperceptible here and here. It's visible a little bit here. But it has dramatic effects on the derivative results. So the first derivative, um, you can see quite a bit of noise um, caused by this additive noise here. Um, very much uh, noise here, even though there's very little noise in the original image. So the even with a low level of noise, this result is pretty much useless of the first derivative. And it's uh, at even a low level, lower level of noise, it's um, the second derivative is even worse. So to get around that, um, we, the edge operators have to do smoothing prior to differentiation. And the Sobel is an example of this. This is the standard Sobel filter for X derivative. It effectively does a smoothing like this followed by a differencing. So all edge detectors do this. They, they do smoothing prior to di di differentiation. Um, then we go ahead and detect candidate edge points and uh, localize the points. An example of the Sobel on this image, um, we apply the Sobel X and Sobel Y operators and combine them to take the magnitude of the gradient. So that uh, gives this result. Now this um, is uh, the value of the gradient is shown here whereas we would really like to signal an edge. We want a yes or no, is there an edge or isn't there? Not a weak score for weak edges and a strong score for strong edges. So one way to do that is by thresholding the gradient magnitude. Um, here this shows a low threshold, so we pick up a lot of edges and a high threshold where we get much fewer. The problem with this is it um, we only want one response to an edge, not a whole band like this, not a whole stripe. So the typical approach to uh, solving that is to take the local maximum or do non-maximal suppression. So we take the, uh, the gradient magnitudes and look perpendicular to the uh, edge, namely along the gradient direction. Um, and just take the point that is a local maximum in that direction. So that gives us a single pixel wide edge as is shown here. 
Um, another picture of that is, uh, let's say for this region of the image, the gradient magnitudes might look like this. Um, the gradient direction is given by the arctangent. So looking from our candidate point along that direction, if it's greater than its neighbors, then we can signal an edge point there. An improvement on these edge operators is to um, consider the notion of scale space. Namely, um, we might want to detect structures of different sizes in the image. So for example, these small dots here might be of interest, or maybe not, maybe it's just the large structures like this. So we would need be able to tune the edge operator to choose um, different scales or sizes of the operator. And many images are like that. They have structures of different sizes, as you can see. So this notion is called scale, scale space. Uh, it's the space of images created by applying a series of operators at different scales. A Gaussian is a good choice for this operator because it has a tunable parameter sigma such that we make sigma small, the Gaussian is narrow. If we increase sigma, the Gaussian uh, gets bigger. So um, we'll see how these are produced in just a minute, but um, these are edges produced by a Gaussian-based operator. And as we increase sigma, we essentially um, only detect large structures. We essentially wipe out all structures much smaller than sigma. The Gaussian operator is useful because um, it's localized in both the spatial and frequency domains, meaning that uh, it goes to zero beyond, essentially goes to zero beyond a certain point in both uh, spatial and frequency, since these are uh, Fourier pairs. So to make a edge operator from the Gaussian, we can take the Laplacian of a Gaussian. This is also called the Marr-Hildreth operator. The idea is we uh, convolve the Gaussian with the image and take the Laplacian, or equivalently, take a Laplacian of a Gaussian and convolve that with the image. So taking this expression and actually performing the derivatives yields uh, this expression. So um, to note it's uh, symmetrical so that um, it just depends on r, which is where r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, so it's circularly symmetrical. Um, at locations of r near 0, it's negative. The, um, the operator is 0, where r is equal to uh, square root of 2 times sigma. And then for r greater than that, it's positive and eventually goes to 0 at infinity. This is a picture of that operator shown as a surface. Um, here they've actually flipped the sign so that the uh, innermost part is positive and the uh, outer part are negative. To see how this would detect edges, um, let's see what would happen at a, a step edge. So let's say we have a step edge and we smooth it with a Gaussian. A first derivative would look like this. It would give us a peak at the location of the edge. A second derivative um, would give us a zero crossing because it's the derivative of the first derivative. So it rises to the left here, zero at the peak, and then is negative uh, to the right. So we can, look, we can detect edges by just detecting the locations of transitions from positive to negative or negative to positive. And we can also estimate the magnitude of the edge by um, looking at the slope of the output of the second derivative operator on the image. Here's an example of that Laplacian of a Gaussian applied to this image. We've also shown the Sobel gradient for comparison. So the Laplacian of a Gaussian applied to the image, that result is shown here. Um, gray values are near zero. Uh, darker values are negative and lighter values are positive. So if we threshold this, we get this image where black is negative and white is positive. So 
uh, these are essentially the zeros. If we look for transitions from white to black or black to white, those are the zero crossings. And those points are shown in this image. So those points um, more or less follow the expected locations of the edges in the image, and they're one pixel wide. So we don't have to do any non-maximal suppression that's already been done for us. Some other nice properties of Laplacian of a Gaussian. Um, we can approximate it by a difference of Gaussian. If we just take a Gaussian of size sigma 1, subtract a Gaussian of size sigma 2, where the ratio is about 1.6, that's a very good approximation to LOG. There's enough also evidence that the human visual system does edge detection similar to this. There's evidence for cells in the visual cortex that are sensitive to light in an innermost portion like this and um, are inhibited by light um, outside that uh, visual angle. And there's also si uh, cells of different sizes um, from small to large with these larger and smaller fields like that. So very much similar to Laplacian of a Gaussian in the scale, sc scale space. Finally, the, um, um, we, the Gaussian can be separated so um, into two one-dimensional kernels, which makes convolution easier. Um, we can write, if we can write a, a filter as a product of two filters, one in X and one in Y, we can apply them um, a one-dimensional filter in X followed by a one-dimensional filter in Y, which is faster. So even though Laplacian of Gaussian is not separable, the difference of Gaussian is because it just uses Gaussians. So each Gaussian here can be represented as a product of two Gaussians, one in X and one in Y. Um, zero crossings, um, some other properties of them, they form closed contours because they're a level set. You know, it's like a shoreline that um, represents sea level, it, it, it separates the negative portions of the image from the positive portions, so it has to be closed. Um, we, can, we can estimate the average separation of Gaussians, of, of zero crossings. Um, if we um, convolve the Gaussian of psi sigma with the image, uh, we would expect those zero crossings to occur uh, on the average about every 2 times square root of 2 sigma. And also as sigma increases, um, the zero crossings are never created, they only merge or eliminate in pairs. So this is a sketch um, of an image slice, let's say where x goes to the right, and we can mark zero crossings after taking Laplacian of a Gaussian. And then if we were to increase sigma, so going up in scale space, and detect the zero crossings, um, eventually they start disappearing like this. But they're never created. They're never, you never see a curve that would look like this.